quite vocal on Sunday, got a lot of attention for um, what appeared to be a short but very succinct speech at the World War II Memorial. You said something to our producers a bit earlier today. You think the government is trying to provoke the veterans to do something. What do you mean by that? And that's just not my statement. I mean, within, within the people who see things wrong here, who are looking at the uh, shutdown, this, is, this can be absolutely planned, and it's a conversation topic. They want us to do something. They either want to diminish our voice or our significance or draw contact, and they can crush us. I mean, you've got Sheila Jackson Lee, who is calling for martial law to end the shutdown. I mean, that's, that's insane. That's getting rid of the Constitution of the United States, which is also what every service member has signed up to and including their life for to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States against enemies both foreign and domestic. So we've got a government here that seems to be wanting to create the conditions that they want to take our Second Amendment. You know, they're, they're going for the Second Amendment. They're trying to take guns from the veterans uh, with PTSD and all those types of things. Um, voting rights. Um, in the past elections, there was a lot of problems with the veterans in voting, getting the ballots back from overseas. And they want to discredit the military and get us to do something stupid so they can lock us down, get rid of... You know, you can call it a conservative Tea Party movement. It's more people who believe in the foundations of this country are the people that they're poking at, which are the citizens of the administration took money for a detention center at an abandoned Walmart building in Brownsville, Texas. <laughs> Oh my gosh, they take them to a nearby Walmart, uh, and then the Walmart is where, uh, I guess, metro buses or school buses will take them to the shelter. The question is, what shelter are they taking them to? Because I heard Tom say GRB is overcrowded and, and uh, or not overcrowded, but at the capacity they had planned for. So right. I think they're, I, I certainly have that question. I don't know if we've answered it. But that's what you mean when you say disorganized organization, because there is at least some kind of system. I mean, earlier, we've seen reporters have situations where people come out of water like this, and it's late at night, and they're wet and with their children and their pets, and uh, they really have nowhere to go. At least they have a system where they're taking them to a Walmart where they can be inside and, and wait and figure out what comes next. Two South Carolina sheriff's deputies. The wall about, you can call it a barrier, you can call it whatever you want, but essentially we need protection in our country. We're going to make it good. Uh, the people of our country want it. I have never had so much support as I have in the last week over my stance for border security, for border control, and for, frankly, the wall or the barrier. They are all around us, invisible and unsuspecting. Three million members of a secretive society older than the American Republic. For nearly 300 years, Generations of Freemasons have obeyed their oaths, hidden their rituals, and maintained their silence until now. What is the secret? See, that's what they don't want to talk about. There's nothing wrong with secrets. I think it adds a facet of fascination to it. In almost every mysterious and controversial event, from Jack the Ripper to the assassination, of John F. Kennedy. You can, if you look hard enough, find Masonic involvement. We know who killed JFK. We know what happened in Area 51. Don't ask. Those conspiracy theories have been out there for a long time. Uh, I think part of it is the fact that we've never been out front. Please, the biometric...
electric entry, exit, visa, tracking system, which we need desperately. For years, Congress has required biometric entry, exit, visa, tracking systems. In my administration, we will ensure that this system is in place. And I will tell you, it will be on land, it will be on sea, it will be in air, we will have a proper tracking system. Sense of this. Um, we're looking at the World War II Memorial there in Washington. I mean, it's essentially a sidewalk that comes off the mall. Why would the government put up barricades, pay people, spend the money, so that they can install barricades to keep people out? Well, well, why would that happen? Well, there's such political dissension in the in the country. They're thumbing their noses at each other. And the thing is, the American citizen and the American service member are now the battlefield. They're trying to fight over us or to get votes. And it's become a political war game. It's like a cold civil war out there for which way the country wants to go. And the right isn't the right anymore. There's no real American, real political figures who believe in the Constitution. And, you know, I could name a few of them who I would kind of trust on the Hill. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, only a few. They're using us. Um, yeah, and, and you've made the point clear that, you know, you think the military is being used as pawns in this. Being U.S. citizens in the event of unrest. We watch our leaders in Washington slowly pass bills that label ordinary Americans as thought criminals and potential domestic terrorists for simply questioning the actions of their government. We see third-party candidates and their impassioned supporters listed in secret government reports that call their allegiance into question and brand them as fanatics and extremists. FBI and Homeland Security documents classify homeschoolers, gun rights activists, some veterans and anti-abortionists as threats against the existing social and political order by default creating an entire nation of radicals and revolutionaries where everyone is a suspect equally guilty until proven otherwise and what is the solution to deal with these people the same way as every other totalitarian regime throughout history marginalize their activities then lock them up Prisons are being built, internment camps constructed, and laws passed that deal severely with anyone who dares to step out of line or ask too many questions. There are approximately over 600 prison camps in the U.S., all fully operational and ready to receive prisoners. They are all staffed and even surrounded by full-time guards, but they are all empty. These camps are to be operated by FEMA should martial law need to be implemented in the United States. The camps all have railroad facilities, as well as roads leading to and from the detention facilities. Many also have an airport nearby. The majority of the camps can house a population of 20,000 prisoners. Currently, the largest of these facilities is just outside Fairbanks, Alaska. The Alaskan facility is a massive mental health camp and can hold approximately 2 million people. One possible FEMA camp has been rumored for years to be at an Amtrak train repair center located in Beech Grove, Indiana. While stories and web videos have attempted to report suspicious activities, the conclusion when honestly investigated is that there really is not any internment camp there. Approximately 600 employees work there daily. We uncovered no unusual buildings, equipment, or personnel. Having said that, there are many well-documented camps and prisons that have sprung up around the United States the past decade or so. Uh, but at one stop, he was interrupted by a heckler.